Hoping you're able to join me today. Welcome to Isaiah 42 Ministries. Um, and uh, thanks for connecting with me. We'll see if we get anybody joining here while I multitask a little bit here. Um, I pray you're having a blessed Monday. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're with me, just uh, let me know who's joining me today. Um, as I share this to my personal page, it's what I'm going to attempt to do here. This is actually part three of um, something I felt like the Lord had asked of me beginning in October. Um, I knew I was going to kick it off October 1st about being aware of the subtleties. I want to hit a little bit more on a few things. It's, I'm not going to be long, um, at least I say that, but um, we'll just see how this goes. But if you're joining me, let me know you're joining me. Maybe you're watching the replay. Um, but I just feel like I, I've got some things that the Lord has placed on my heart and that He's revealed to me that I just want to speak into. Hey, Heather, thanks for joining me. Bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But first of all, I just want to ask Holy Spirit to come and meet with us because we can't do anything without Him. I can't do nothing without Him. I believe His presence is already here, but I'm asking Him to just come and dwell here. Lord, I just, Lord, I thank you so much, God, for your goodness and for your presence, God, for your faithfulness, Lord. And Lord, that you love us so much, God, that Lord, you um, have a heart to warn and to alert us, God, of the things and of the, the, the tricks of the enemy, God, so that we won't trip. That we won't stumble, that we won't fall, God. That's your heart, God. That Lord, we would, we would just keep our eyes fixed upon you, God. So Lord, I'm asking that you would come, but you would come in power and demonstration, that you would give revelation and wisdom, God. Lord, in this moment, God, I'm asking that revelation and wisdom, God, would just come forth through this live today. Or Lord, those who watch the replay, God, that they would receive and have an ear to hear today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, we need your presence. So, God, I'm asking for your presence to come. Lord, would you just have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me know if you're joining me today or if you um, maybe are watching the replay. I want to jump right into this. Um, I don't know how many will have. It's a work day and and... You know, so a lot of people are working and it's noon and they're probably trying to rush and get lunch. But I'm going to, I just feel I need to to share some things with you. I've been speaking to you about the subtleties of the enemy. And this month of October, first of all, I shared with you before, this is my favorite time of the year. I love fall. I love to see the beautiful colors of the trees and the beauty of the Lord and how he just paints such beauty because he is the creator but at the same time you know we know that the enemy works in counterfeit we know that the enemy is is a counterfeit of of the lord and always tries to come you know and and just bring a counterfeit to the things of the lord and we need discernment in this hour we need to be sharp in our discernment we need to be of sober mind and we need to be alert um, in this hour, the Bible speaks very much of that. Um, but this month of October, of course, we know um, Halloween is this month. There's a lot of just, um, I feel like there's a lot of evil that just gets bombarded um, in, in this month of October. It's very heightened. I believe there's a lot of witchcraft that is stirring, um, a lot of things, a lot of curses that are spoken out and you may be like Christy you're going just a little too far um, you know uh, but the thing of it is is that there really is demonic things that take place there really is um, you know uh, the devil that it, the Bible says in I believe it's first Peter 5 um, is that uh, to be alert be of sober mind because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion he's like a roar, roaring lion but see, we have the lion of the tribe of Judah as believers, as people who are believers. And we have the presence of the Lord. We have Jesus that lives and dwells within us. 
we have the lion of the tribe of Judah. And we got the enemy who prowls around like a roaring lion. He brings a counterfeit and he brings these subtleties in our life and he, he tries to, you know, set traps for um, believers and um, so what I want to share with you today, what I want to start out with with this part three, I've shared with you some dreams that I've had that the Lord has given me. I've shared with you, um, you know, where the Lord has woken me up at night. Hi Angie, I appreciate you joining me, bless you. Please share this if you're connected on here. I would just appreciate you sharing this video, maybe we can, um, you know, get people to connect with us. I believe this is a this is Rama. I believe this is right now and the, the Lord just wants to speak to us because listen we must the thing of it is is I'm not trying to um, I need you to hear my heart I'm not trying to to heighten the things of the enemy but I believe that we are called and we need to know our enemy we need to know how our enemy operates and how he works and we need to be alert and sober minded so that we know when his tricks come into play and we know how to tear that down quickly. Amen? Amen? Because our eyes should be fixed upon Jesus. That is where our eyes should be. But we must be wise. We must be wise. The Bible tells us to be, um, uh, what, what's the, what is it I'm trying to say? To be wise as serpents <laughs> and gentle as doves. Isn't that uh, what it says? Um, you know, that we should have wisdom. And let me tell you something. The serpent is cunning. The serpent, the devil is, um, he's cunning and he's crafty. And he is, um, he, he sets traps. And there's a scripture I want to share with you. But I first of all want to go right here. The Lord had woke me up. Like I said, I've shared a lot of dreams. You can go back and watch part one and part two of some of the dreams that I've shared. And I believe part of my my calling and for Isaiah 42 Ministries is to um, speak to the bride and and to uh, and call for purity and holiness. And because listen, a sinner's just going to act like a sinner's supposed to. But the thing of it is, if we're saved and born again, we ought to be representing Christ and we ought to look like Him. We ought to talk like Him. There ought to be something different about us. And we ought to be constantly growing in those things to look more like Him. But here's what I want to speak to you about is because here's how the enemy operates. This is what he does. Um, the Lord had woke me up. It's been several nights ago. And I knew I was going to hit on this. And the Lord reminded me of it again. And I knew I had to hit on this part. But several weeks ago, the Lord had woke me up and I kept seeing 222. Um, he woke me up at 222. So I knew immediately that the Lord was speaking to me about Isaiah 22, 22, which is talking about the keys of David and how we have the keys to open and close doors. And also about Daniel 2.22, about how the Lord will reveal mysteries to us. You can look those scriptures up. But, but when um, the Lord woke me up again... And I knew he was putting um, 222 again on my heart. And when I woke up, my dog was stirring around. And this was like, you know, around 2, 222 in the morning. And my dog was stirring. But what I, so I had to go check on my dog. But I knew immediately the Lord was calling me to pray. But I noticed that my dog had actually thrown up. I know this is gross, but, but I'm speaking spiritually here. So I need you to hear me by the Spirit of the Lord. My dog had threw up, but he and I was trying to go catch him, and he went back. You know how a dog is if you have ever owned an animal, owned a dog, and it went back and it began to eat that um, vomit that it had just threw up. And immediately, immediately, the Lord spoke to my spirit about a dog returning to its vomit, and I was like, "Okay, Lord, you're speaking to me here." So I went immediately to my Bible. And um, I found the scripture, and that scripture is actually in 2 Peter 2.22. Isn't that interesting? Now, you can't tell me the Lord has, wasn't speaking, because He was. He had been speaking those things to me. And what I realized what the Lord was speaking to me about not returning to your vomit, not being entangled again. See, because the thing of it is, is what does that mean? How can you be entangled again? That means that the Lord has already come and set you free. 
But the enemy comes with these subtleties and with these traps. And he tries to get you entangled again. And that's what the Bible's talking about in 2 Peter 2.22. About not returning to your vomit. Not being foolish. And I believe it's even in Proverbs where it speaks about a fool becoming foolish again. And not and a dog returning to its vomit. Now listen, you may be crystal. What does that have to do with the subtleties? Well, I was reading in Matthew chapter 13 um, weeks ago. And the Lord began to speak to me because this is where the Lord is speaking in parables. And he, he is speaking and he's looking for an ear to hear. Are you hearing me? Listen, I believe the Lord is looking and searching for an ear that will hear. Because if you read all through the gospel, and this is Jesus speaking in red through Matthew in chapter 13. And there are places where he's talking about the four soils. And then he goes in and he's talking about the wheat and the tares. And he's talking about all of these things. But he's also looking for an ear that will hear. Can I get an amen? The Lord is searching for someone who will hear by the Spirit of the Lord. Because so many times I think we hear something and it doesn't take root. Amen. It doesn't dig deep and take a root to where it can grow. Instead, what it does is it just... Um, it becomes, uh, the enemy comes and steals that seed. We allow the enemy to come in and set a trap and 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 um, just mess that up. And I want to read this scripture to you. This is in Matthew 13. And it's in verse 40, 41, but I'm going to back up just a little bit. Starting in verse 37, just hear me here. It says, Jesus replied, the son of man is the farmer who plants the good seed. The field is the world. And the good seed represents the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the harvesters are the angels. Just as the, as the weeds are sorted out, and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send His angels, and they will remove from His kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will throw they throw these into the fiery furnace, where there will be. Sorry, I, I got where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. There's that scripture. He's looking for an ear to hear. Now when I looked up this scripture, one of the versions of the Bible says that when the Lord sends out His angels together, they will gather out all that offends and those who practice lawlessness. I believe the New King James Version says that. I read from the New Living. Now listen to what this word offends means. It means scandalon. That's where we get the word scandal. I need you to hear me by the Spirit of the Lord. This is where we get the word scandal. And the Lord is saying that when they go and that harvesting comes, that there's going to be a separation that takes place. It says that um, they're, they're going to gather out all that offends that word scandal, there's a scandal on. That word in the Greek is what this means. And it means a stick for bait, a trap, a snare, a stumbling block, an offense, an entrapment. And the stick, have you ever, if you know anything or know or have ever been hunting, my, my son actually hunts all, you know, all through the seasons where they have different hunting. He's set traps before and he's trapped. Which means there's a trap and, and that trap gets set. And if you've ever seen like on cartoons or anything like this stick that holds up the trap and the bait's inside the trap. And it tries to lure people, lure that animal into the trap to where that stick gets hit, gets pulled and it gets trapped in this box. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is how the enemy operates. This is a ploy of the enemy. And that's what he does. And the thing of it is, is that the Lord is saying, listen, I've done freed you from some things. Now, don't go back and get entangled again because the Bible speaks 
um, in Peter, in that second Peter, it says that they'll be worse off. Listen, they'll be worse off as like that dog returning to its vomit. Second Peter 2.22, that's what it says. And But the enemy sets that trap. He lays a snare. And he always lays that trap and sets that bait there because it looks good. It smells good. You feel like, ooh, I'll feel good if I do that for a moment. But the thing of it is, is it's a trap of the enemy. And that's a subtlety. Those are those subtleties that the Lord wants you to be aware of. Not to get entangled again. Not to get wrapped up again. Not to be like that dog that goes back and licks up the vomit. Not to, to fall into the scandal, the trap of the enemy. Because the thing of it is, is that we've got to be tilling up the ground within us. Our hearts is that ground. Our hearts is what needs tilled. It needs cultivated. We need to cultivate our heart and spend time with the Lord and, and be like Moses and go up on the mountain and spend time with Him. Before I got on here, the Lord was reminding me about Moses and how he was up on the mountain. And guess what happened? Aaron, who was a priest. Listen to this. I have something to share in this. Aaron was a priest, but he allowed the people, he allowed the people to sway him and to pull him into creating a calf that they began to worship. And there became idol worship. And here we've got Aaron, who is a priest, who is the brother of Moses. Moses is up on the mountain spending time with the Lord. And Aaron gets swayed by the subtleties of the people. He allows the enemy a foothold. He allows the enemy to creep in and to, to put a little bit of yeast in the leaven. These are some of the teachings that I've been talking about. And therefore, it just messed up the whole batch. And you've got people that are worshiping a calf. In a moment, it just happened. In a, it's like, how did, they, how did they go from that to worshiping a calf? How did they get there? How did they get there in that moment? And here Moses is going up and spending time with the Lord. We have got to cultivate the soil of our heart. We have got to cultivate that and spend time with the Lord and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is. The Lord is looking for those who have an ear to hear. Amen? We need an ear to hear in this hour. Too many times, we're, we're in this season of October, and like I said, there's much witchcraft, there's trickery of the enemy. And listen, the enemy has been doing this for a long time. He's been around for a long time. And the thing of it is, is he pulls the same tricks, but we keep falling for it. We as believers keep falling for his tricks. And listen, I know we're not perfect. I've done it. But I don't want to be caught up in a scandal. I don't want to be caught up just like what Matthew talks about here in the offense. That scandal on, that scandal. I don't want to be caught in a trap. I want to be alert and I want to be a sober mind. And I want to realize the tricks of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's my prayer for you. Is that you would be alert and you would be aware. And that you would not compromise. Because I, I think that's even what happened with Aaron. Compromise came in. He began to hear what people had to say. And he was pressured by man. Rather than having an ear to hear what the Spirit of God was saying. And hearing what God was telling him to do. He began to get swayed by man. Listen, I used to be that type of person that I would, um, I was a people pleaser. I wanted to please people. I didn't want to, to step on toes. And this isn't a pop popular message. You know, we speak of Halloween. I'm not here to try to condemn you about you taking your kids trick-or-treating. Um, I shared with you, I, it was something I didn't do. I felt like the Lord spoke to me. Don't open a door to that. That's something you have to pray about. I believe, and I'm praying that the Lord reveal to you things. But I wasn't going to give the enemy a foothold. You know, I knew my kids were going to have to deal with enough. You know, they were going to be bombarded with enough. I didn't need not one more thing thrown at them. I did not need not one more thing, one more, you know, slip of the enemy with his foot in the door. Because they were up against enough already. So I chose no. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm not going to allow that compromise. And listen, have I failed? Have I made some compromises along the way in my walk with the Lord? Yeah. 
and and I've seen where I man I just fell for that trick or I fell for that scandal that the enemy threw out there but what I want to speak to you is is that we must be aware we must be discerning we must be sharp in this hour and we must not allow the enemy to pull us back and to begin to to go be like a dog or like that pig that goes and wallows in the mud again and I believe you know we, the Bible talks about the great fall away and there are many what you have to be um, a part of something in order to fall away from something we need the truth of the gospel preached in this hour you've got to be a part of something in order to fall away from something listen don't get entangled again the Bible says you'll be worse off listen if you feel like you've been slipping I want to pray over you today but I want to speak to this I want you to hear by the Spirit of the Lord shut the door shut the door to the enemy where you've allowed compromise where you think well this is just fun and games it won't hurt me shut the door because listen whatever you allow your kids are going to um, be entangled even more so I remember hearing a teaching when I was in the youth pastors um, coaching thing our mentor told us she said you know whatever you do in moderation gives others the freedom to do an excess so whatever I allowed slightly was going to open a door for those who were watching me to just do it in excess that was a that was a huge flag for me like okay Lord help me to check those areas where I I'm just you know compromising or I'm just you know just going about my own thing I want to be obedient and about his business and I want to slam the door on the enemy amen I don't want to allow the enemy because listen I am a praying mother I am a mother who intercedes for her children even as they are adults I find myself praying more now that they're adults than when they were little it is like because the enemy wants to steal kill and destroy we already know that's his job but why do I want to open doors to help him do that that's a hard statement I know but see we need to look to see what doors we've opened we need to look and see what doors we've opened you know and it's by you know I've spoken to you even about the things I allowed to come across my TV to things I allowed into my children's eye gates ear gates into their mouth gate you know what I mean even from the music they listen to you may be like Krista that's pretty religious you know you're like a Pharisee with that you know what you can think that all you want but I believe there is a guarding of our hearts Proverbs 4 23 talks about guarding our hearts for it determines the course of life that we go on and I was a guarding I put a guard before the, our eyes I put a guard before our ears because these are gateways and whatever enters in through my eyes and my ears is going to get into my soul it's going to get into my spirit and I was real careful about what entered the gates amen and I think so many times we just nonchalantly go about our own thing because we want to be popular or we want to be what culture says to do or we don't want to be those ones that set apart my Bible tells me that I'm a chosen generation I am set apart I should look different I should talk different I should act different and I should walk different there should be something different about me it should not just be melting into the culture and listen I know that that's not popular preaching and it's not this trying to become religious thinking that's not what I want because I think we can go too far that way I think we can take things too far and drive it too far that that but and you have to know what the Holy Spirit's saying I know there's personal conviction for things and just like personal conviction if you wear a skirt or you wear pants to church listen if the Lord convicts you wants you to wear a skirt listen I'm gonna love you either way I'm talking about the subtleties we got to get real about this the enemy wants to kill us he wants to steal he wants to destroy but he's out to kill that's his job he wants to completely demolish and he's after our kids even more so so we as the older generation 
supposed to be wise in things, we should be pouring in and standing firm upon our faith and not allowing a foothold, praying and interceding, covering our children and children's children by the blood of the Lamb and not allowing these subtleties and a foothold for the enemy. Amen? Amen. I don't want to be like that and like a dog returning to vomit. I don't want to go backwards. I want to keep marching forwards. I want to keep my eyes fixed on the prize. Paul said, I haven't achieved it yet, but my eyes are fixed on the prize. I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep running the race. Amen. We have a race that we're running here. And the enemy, if he can trip you up, I keep thinking of the road runner. I don't know. That's an old cartoon. That coyote. <laughs> you know, it was real crazy, too. I was driving home the other night. And in the middle of the berm on the interstate, my daughter was with me. I said, oh, my gosh, did you just see that? There was a coyote in the middle of the um, the the roadway so like I was on this side of the interstate and there was other side in that middle section there was a coyote there and I said okay Lord you're still speaking this there, you're still speaking this and it reminded me of the road runner of how that road runner would zoom by he was running his race and that coyote kept trying to to throw a snare and try to destroy him she kept trying to kill that road runner listen you're called to be a road runner amen and listen, the coyote, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion. He's trying to, to set those traps and trying to, to drop big rocks on you, trying to stumble you up in your walk. Listen, don't give a foothold to him. Do not allow the foothold. Don't allow the little compromises because those compromises grow into huge boulders. Amen? Can I get an amen? They do. Because when we start to compromise the little things, when we start to compromise the little things, it begins to grow. And we just become like, well, that's okay. Well, that's okay. We just brush it under the rug. And we just brush it under the rug. Listen. No. The Bible talks about standing firm, being immovable. Stand firm upon your faith. Don't let anything sway you to the right or to the left. We must have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. We must have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I don't want to be like Aaron. You know, where I have all these voices in my ear. And then all of a sudden, I'm in idolatry and idol worship. Aaron got stuck there. Aaron just got swayed. He got swayed, but we must have our feet firmly grounded, especially in this hour. I believe witchcraft is rampant right now in this hour. And I believe we so easily just pat our hands to, to the things. Witchcraft has become all across Disney. Listen, I'll preach this. I don't care. It's not popular. And people want to laugh because people are taking this too far. I actually shared a, a link on my my Facebook page from CBN News where a pastor is speaking and they're interviewing him and he's got much wisdom that he is bringing out about the Hocus Pocus 2 movie. You know, when Harry Potter came out, I, I said, no, my kids are not watching that. I'm not opening a door to cast spells and to, you know, it's all play and all of this. No, it's real. It's real. And it's the real deal. And, and, and we... What is so crazy to me is we have people who have come out of the occult and witchcraft and they are preaching and teaching these is that this is not a game. This isn't a game. But we make it so easy and we want to dress our kids up like witches and, and, and let them carry a broom. And you know, you may be like, that's all fun and games, Krista. But no, when they're in their room practicing um, the actual occult or they have tarot cards and they're, they're trying to do all of these things and they've opened a doorway to witchcraft right into your home. And then you're wondering why things are happening the way they're, they're happening. Am I preaching? <laughs> Listen, it's not popular. People won't like this. People will think I'm condemning or that I'm, I'm ridiculing, and I'm not. I feel like there has to be a warning. We must warn and we must make aware because the enemy has set so many traps and so many are falling for it. They're falling for it. I can see that trap set up and I can see that food, what looks real good. 
You know, the Lord, the enemy comes with a good opportunity. I heard Ryan was strange say this, and it stuck with me. The enemy will always bring a good opportunity, but it's not a God opportunity. There is a difference. There is a difference. And we fall for the good opportunities because it looks good. Ooh, it tastes good. It smells good. You know what I mean? It looks like it's right. You know, I remember reading something one time too. It says discernment is not telling between right and wrong. Discernment is is to be able to discern between right and almost right. Isn't that a word? <laughs> and see, that's so true. It's so true. I believe that, that we must be sharp in this hour. I believe that we must be sharp in our discernment. We must be vigilant. We must be alert because the enemy is prowling around. And he's coming in. He's coming in like that wolf in sheep's clothing. He's coming in so subtly. And it looks okay. And we, 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 we let it just kind of go for a little bit because no, but we don't want to say anything. We don't want to stir up any feathers. We don't want to, you know, and I'm not saying just, you know, to, to, to not um, have this love behind this. I'm just saying it's time to be real and it's time to be alert in this hour and quit playing games. Quit the li allowing the little leaven, the little bit of yeast because it ruins the whole batch. You know, I um, I started uh, working in the schools, and I was helping um, in the kitchen to cook. And we were actually making dough. We were making bread. It's so funny how the Lord just continuously uses what I'm doing in the physical to speak to me in the spiritual. And I think He does that. And we knew that that we had to add yeast to the to the bread, and you have to have it for the bread to rise. But we knew as soon as we activated that yeast that, you know what, I mean, you, you have to do things specific with the yeast in order for it to, um, you know, how it operates with the bread. And, um, and the Bible is clear. He, Jesus just is so cool because he uses analogies. He uses parables that, that okay, puts it down on our level. And if you have an ear to hear, you begin to understand, okay, Lord, that's what you're saying. And that yeast... It, it affects the bread. It causes the bread to rise. And it just takes a little bit. It only takes a small amount of yeast for those for that bread to rise in these beautiful rolls. And man, they look real good. Those rolls look real good. Now listen, I'm not dogging you out on bread. I love bread. I love rolls. <laughs> but they look real pretty. But it only took a little bit of yeast to cause those rolls to look so good and to taste good. And the thing of it is, is that that's how the enemy comes at us. He comes at us with those little subtleties. It looks so good, man. It looks so tasty. He did it with Eve. And it just messed things up. It messed up the whole batch. It messes up the whole thing. And see, we need to be alert and we need to be smart and we need to be aware in this hour. Don't be like a dog that returns to its vomit. Don't be a fool. If the Lord has brought you out of something, don't you dare allow the door to be cracked open in areas that's going to lead you back and then you're going to end up worse off than before. Listen, read 2 Peter 2.22. Read all through there what it says. You know what's amazing to me though? Is that you go on to read chapter 3 in there and it talks about how the Lord is patient. You know, because you have people who mock, well, what about the Lord? I thought the Lord was going to return. I thought the Lord was coming back. It goes on and, and the Word of God says that He's He's not being um, delayed. What it is is that He's being patient so that many will come to the Lord. That's the goodness of God. He's patient. He's long-suffering. He's patient and He's long-suffering. And His heart is so that you'll come into the kingdom of God. But maybe you are just being, um, maybe you're stuck in trickery. Maybe you're stuck in that spirit of witchcraft. Maybe there are doors that you've opened and you don't even realize what you're operating in. The Lord wants to free you today. He wants to free you today. And He wants you to have a heart 
and, and a mind and be full of wisdom. He wants you to cultivate the very soul, the very spirit man, your heart, so that you can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. That you're not concerned about what this one or that one is saying. Listen, that should be confirming to what the Lord is already speaking to you. When you hear from others, it should confirm already what the Lord has been saying. But if you aren't spending time with Him in the secret place, then you aren't going to know what He's saying. Now listen, I know there are times when He's silent. There's been a season of that here recently. But I've got to go back. The Lord told me, do this starting October 1st. So I'm continuing to be obedient to what He's asked of me. And it's time to wake up, church. It's time to wake up, bride. It is time to remove the spots and blemishes off of you because you've allowed compromise. You've allowed things to creep in. You've allowed things in your walk with Him and then you wonder why you're where you're at. Listen, I'm, I'm guilty of the same thing and I want to be alert. I want to be so alert in this hour. Do you know what the New Living Translation says in that second Peter that I'm talking about, about a dog returning to its vomit? Listen to this. In verse 19, it's talking about voices and false prophets. It says, They promise freedom, but they themselves are slaves of sin and corruption. For you are a slave to whatever controls you. That's a statement. It says you're a slave to whatever controls you. What are you allowing to control you? Is it man's opinion? Is it um, man's approval? Or is it the Holy Spirit? When you enlisted in the army of God, you said, Lord, you're Lord of my life. You have full control. You have full reign over my life. So you take charge. You ha we had to die to ourselves. When he became Lord. When we said, Lord, I'm a believer. I've, I've sinned. I repent. Come into my heart. When we, when we gave our hearts to Jesus, we died to self. Which means whatever he says goes. We don't like that. We like to be about our own business and be in control of our life ourselves. Listen, it's time to relinquish control. And say, Lord, whatever you desire, whatever you want, wherever you say go, whatever you say to do, God, I relinquish control and I give it all to you. Because whatever, listen, what you're a slave to whatever controls you. I want to be a slave to the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't even call me slave. It calls me friend. Isn't that good to know? He calls me friend. He calls me friend. He calls me daughter. Man. But I'll do whatever he says. Because I know his way is better. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher than mine. And I don't want the subtleties to come in. And I don't want these little things to creep in. And to entangle me. I don't want to get caught in those traps. You need to be aware of the traps. What looks good? Is it God? Did the Lord say? What did He say? What does the Lord say? What does His Word say? Listen. The Israelites lost their way time and time again because they, they would be like pagans. They began to worship idols. They began to complain. They began to murmur. They opened doors to things that they should not have opened doors to. And then the Lord was ready to just kill them off in the Old Testament. That's a big deal. Aren't you thankful that He's gracious and long-suffering and kind and merciful? Aren't you thankful for the mercies of God that are new every morning? Aren't you thankful for that? But there is going to come a day that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I will bow now. I will bow my knee now. I'm not going to wait until that day comes when He steps foot on the earth. I will bow my knee now to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, to whatever He says. Remove the compromises. Remove the little areas where you've allowed a little bit of leaven in. You've allowed the yeast to ruin the whole batch. And then you wonder what's wrong. Listen, 
We must be so alert in this hour. The enemy is prowling around and there is false prophets across the board. And many are being swayed because they don't know the word of God. They're only going with what sounds good and what looks good. Or what pats somebody on the back or what scratches their ears. I'm not here to scratch your ear. I'm not here to tickle your ear. I'm sorry. I'm not. We must know the Word of God. We must know the truth of who He is. We must be about His business in this hour. We must know our enemy so that we can push back the enemy. Amen? Amen? Get your eyes on Jesus. I'm not telling you to look at the enemy and just keep looking at the traps that you're going to fall into. That's not my message today. I'm saying that you need to close doors because some of you, you've lived in compromise for years. You've lived in compromise for years and then you wonder why things are the way they are. Listen, it rains on the just and the unjust. No doubt about it. That's the Bible. Believers are going to walk through some suffering. They're going to deal with some hard times. If you think you're going to be a believer and you're never going to have a hard time, somebody lied to you. But some things we've opened a door to that we need to slam a door to. And we've allowed subtleties in. We've allowed the enemy to just creep in and have his way. And it's time to slam the door shut. It's time to remove the compromises. And it's time to get on page with the Word of God and what God says. And it's time to stand. And it's time to be bold in this hour. It's time to open our mouth. It's time to not be silent. It's time to speak the truth and to speak it clearly and to not hide behind um, walls and to not hide behind complacency and idolatry. Remove the idols. Remove the, the things that need to go. And you know what it is. There are many right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Lord has been dealing with you. I'm speaking to somebody right now. The Lord has been dealing with you and He is saying, I want that. I want that or it is going to kill you. Lord, I speak to that one right now, God. Lord, whatever it is, if it's pornography, God, if they are turning on pornography and they are stuck in the sexual sin, Lord, I'm asking you right now to free them. God, I'm asking that they would turn immediately, God, and walk away. God, that they would shut it down, that there would be no more compromising, God. Lord, I just ask for purity of mind, purity of heart, God. Lord, we declare that by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray right now for that one, God. There's been things that even they're watching on the television, God. Mm. The Lord, it's been opening doors. And then they're wondering why they're dealing with the sounds that's going on in their home. Oh my God, I'm speaking to somebody today. Listen, it's because you've opened a door through your television. You've opened a door through something that you've been watching that has demonic activity in it. And then you're wondering why you're dealing with some of the things at nighttime. The Lord is saying, close the door. Close the door and cleanse the house. Hallelujah. And you allowed it in through a subtlety thinking it was okay. I don't know who that's for or who may watch on the replay, but I believe that's for somebody. Shut the door. And it doesn't matter if you can handle it. What about that grandchild? What about that little child? What about your kid who has a kid and they walk in your house and they can't handle it because whatever you do in moderation gives them the freedom to do in access. Some of you have been drinking and you've been drinking excessively. And you've been drinking to calm your nerves or to calm the pain. And the Lord says, I want the bottle. I want that bottle. And I want it gone. He's dealing with you. He's been dealing with you. And the Lord is saying, it's time to close that door. We break off addiction right now. We speak to the spirit of addiction. And we say go by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. See, it is His blood that was poured out for us to walk in freedom. And my Bible says that He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Clean up your house. Receive Jesus in. 
clean up your house and receive Jesus in. Listen, you must, once the house is swept clean, Jesus must come in and dwell there. If not, the enemy's going to come around and he's going to bring seven more times and you're going to be worse off than before. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask right now, Lord, that you would give grace, God. Lord, that you would give grace and direction, God, for the hearer today. That, Lord, you would open the ears, Lord, of the hearer. That we would have ears to hear, God. That we would have wisdom in how to step. Your word says that you are a, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, I'm asking that your light would shine, God. Lord, that the steps would be taken that need taken, God. Your word says you order the steps of the righteous man. So God, I'm praying right now, God, that you would order the steps. Show them how to walk out, not to be entangled again. Not to be caught in the traps, God. Not to be caught in the offenses, the scandals of the enemy. Lord, I speak life to the hearer today. I speak life and redemption and redeeming power. Resurrection power. Raise them up today by the blood of the Lamb. By the word of their testimony, God. Set them free, Lord. Lord, I break off spirit of witchcraft right now in the name of Jesus. Where you've opened doors to the occult. And you've opened doors to witchcraft. I speak to that right now and I say go in the name of Jesus. Slam the door shut. Remove the things that need to go. Remove those things that need to go. Maybe you've just been reading your horoscope. Mm. Listen, I'm hitting some things. Maybe you've just been reading a horoscope every morning thinking that, um, listen, that's witchcraft. That's a door. Shut the door. Shut the door to that. That is not prophecy. That is not prophecy. That is a door to witchcraft. Shut the door. Shut it. Hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you for your word today, God. I thank you, God, that, Lord, you're teaching us to be aware of the subtleties. God, fix our eyes upon Jesus, God, that, Lord, we would not stumble or falter. That, God, we would keep our eyes on you because I believe you'll lead the way, God. Lord, let us not get caught up in idolatry. Let us not get caught up, God, in a snare. God, let us not get entangled again, Lord, by the things of this world. Lord, let us not be like that dog that returns to its vomit, God. Lord, let us not be foolish in this hour. Give us wisdom. Let us be wise as serpents, God. Harmless as doves, God. Lord, would you give us insight? Would you give us wisdom? Would you show us how to walk this thing out, God? And Lord, would you give your grace and your mercy, God? Lord, but your word does say that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. And it's time to clean our houses. It's time to clean it up. Remove the things that got to go. Remove the compromises. Remove the little things that we've allowed in to choke out the very word of God. To choke out the very word. To where we think that our own way is right. Lord, we want to be about your business. We want to be about your way. Lord, Isaiah 55 says your ways are higher. Your thoughts are higher. Lord, there's nothing good in us but you. So God, I'm asking that you come in power and demonstration. And Lord, that you would show yourself and reveal. Lord, show people how to walk out this walk. And Lord, we would be like Paul. We would fix our gaze, God. And we would be about finishing the race, God. There's a prize to win. There's a prize to win. So Lord, set us on the right path, God. Lord, if we've lost our way somewhere, if there's been somebody on here, they've just lost their way and they've opened doors, God, and they've seen compromises begin to choke out the very word. God, I'm asking God right now you bring clarity. Show them the doors that need shut and locked, never to be opened again. For Lord, you've been showing me 22, 22. That means, God, in Isaiah 22, 22, you've given us the keys, God. You've given us the keys and this is the key. It's by the blood of the Lamb. It's by the blood of the Lamb. And you've given us the authority, God, to shut doors that no man can shut, God. To shut and bind and loose, God. So, God, I thank you for the keys that you've given. Lord, may we access them in the right ways, God. Show us. Reveal to us, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's my prayer for you today. 
I pray that the Lord brings freedom to somebody today. I pray the Lord brings freedom to somebody today. And I pray that you don't get caught in a trap. Listen, that's not to bring fear. It's to be alert. The Bible speaks of being alert of sober mind. We must... Guess what? When you're spending time with the Lord, when you're walking in the Spirit, when you're living by the Spirit, Galatians says that we're to walk in the Spirit and live by the Spirit. When we're at, when we are walking in the Spirit, living by the Spirit, we're going to be so aware of those subtleties. We're going to know when that enemy comes in and tries to stick his little foot in the door. The Lord's going to give a check in your spirit. There's going to be a nudging in your spirit. Don't disregard that. Don't, don't just say, oh, that's just me. The Lord may be trying to speak something to you. He may be nudging you to say, pay attention here. Pay attention. I speak for sharpness right now in discernment. That you would be sharp and attuned and alert in this hour. That the Lord would sharpen you even more so. Discernment is not to tear people down. Discernment is always to redeem. To see the redemption of people. Amen. Amen. I believe the Lord shows us things to protect us, yes, but also to help walk people out of those places they're stuck in. Now listen, if they're not willing to walk out, sometimes you got to just shake the dust off your feet and go on. But we must know and we must be aware and attuned in this hour. I just speak blessing over you. I want to thank you for joining me. I did not mean to go this long. I'll probably share this on YouTube. Um, my YouTube channel, you can subscribe to that. It's Isaiah 42 Ministries if you didn't get to listen to the whole thing. Or you can go back and listen to part one and part two. I just want to bless you. I want to thank you for connecting to Isaiah 42 Ministries. Um, you know, I don't know what the Lord's doing here. I'm just trying to be obedient and follow Him. But I believe we need to be alert in this hour more than ever. It's time for watchmen. The Lord had spoke to me. I shared with you before about the watchmen repairing the towers. We must get on our watchtowers and we must watch. The enemy's slick. He's cunning. He's a liar. And he's crafty. And he has those ways of trying to sneak in. Be aware and be alert in this hour of his subtleties. And of those little places he tries to squirm his way in. And may you slam the door shut and lock it in his face. Amen. 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 I just declare the blood of Jesus over you. I just declare victory over you. That you are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. Arise in this hour. Arise in this hour. Walk in victory. He's already paid the price. Don't get caught again and be like a dog returning to your vomit. Don't do that. Don't be a fool in this hour. Listen. Get your eyes fixed on Him. Don't look back at what He's already delivered you from. Don't go backwards. Go forwards. We must be marching forwards in this hour. I pray blessing over you. Thank you for joining me. Again, you can subscribe and like Isaiah 42 Ministries on my YouTube. I'll have this message on there. It's a little lengthy, so it may be better for people to watch from there. You can follow me on Isaiah 42 Ministries here on the Facebook page or on Instagram. Share it. Get the word out um, if you know of anybody who just may need to hear this today. I pray blessing on you. Thanks for joining me today. And um, I pray that you're blessed on this Monday. But most of all, I pray that you hear the voice of the Lord, that you would have an ear to hear in this hour. Jesus speaks it very clearly. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. We must hear Him. And we must be about the Father's business. God bless you. I'll talk to you guys soon. Stay connected to more that will be coming up with Isaiah 42 Ministries. Love you guys. Many blessings. Love y'all.